And uh, it, it gives us a sense of pride that uh, even though it's a simple piece of you know, it takes up uh, some really good things, we can put the uh, big big plan right there and say that uh, it's really good. Uh, country. And more importantly, once it's launched into space, you can say that you know, a country, the country's plan is already in the sort of in this modern piece. So, uh, but of course, this is a possible without the help of uh, professional public members of the industry. So, with this endeavor, we're trying to um, source out a lot of these um, well, this development parts of the uh, that we can tap our uh, local industry. So, in, in this case, we tried this uh, publication and some of the Enclosures, like mechanical enclosure, uh, public vehicle, and of course the layout of uh, the assembly of the small parts. Uh, so we're still in the process of qualifying the parties, um, getting the feedback from states, from the small groups, but they're very confident that they're uh, functional and that they're providing the intent that we have. So another thing that we implemented in the world is uh, the deployable solar solar panel. So the mechanical system to do this uh, is, if you think about it, it's simple, but it's very critical and very important to qualify and to be for this test and And one of the things that we want to do also in the future is to maximize the capability we have in terms of producing the solar panels in the So we're still in the process of uh, working with the but I think uh, one of this development, the important thing with, whenever we uh, embark on these complex systems is the way we test and qualify them. So for the water and water to from the multi level up to the full system level, we have to uh, undergo several environmental tests. So let me take some of them. For example, we have uh, a radio pattern test, antenna pattern test that we conduct on an animal chamber. So the animal chamber is the same. Uh, like the city that blocks out the other um, electromagnetic waves from uh, real life sources and electronics uh, and other devices. So, in here, it's important that we ensure that the antennas or communications holders we have on the satellite are in their work. Because uh, the thing about sending things into space is that it's almost always a one way trip. There's no, um, there's no uh, way of repeating them whenever we need. So you have to qualify them on the, um, the saber to ensure that they're working seamlessly. And then another important uh, test is what we call the vibration test. So it's not the vibration that it experiences in orbit, but more of the plants that go into space. So the rockets, the rocket uh, launches that we have, uh, it produces a lot of vibration into the system. And another one is the thermal vacuum test to ensure that it's performing in the vacuums and um, constantly changing thermal conditions in space. And of course, we have to test it for some gravitational coordinates because gravitational outside our atmosphere is uh, worse than it is to now. So, uh, in satellite water, uh, one, there are 430 meters is currently. So, this is demonstrate uh, how how the satellite experiences the vibration. Let me show you this video from the live test of the engineering model of the So I showed the number of volts because um, uh, it's quite a lot for 100, but just one phase from a platform on this test, the whole picture will be the on the ground. It will not be accepted by the ground uh, uh, for So like an earthquake on a building, you know, too much and uh, too big uh, from the fixed structure will cause it to be so again, okay, so this says that we have to do up one, do up two, the ones that we have for part of the process. And one of the challenges we have in testing how we do this uh, for qualification is that we have to do a broad testing because some of the facilities, important facilities, does not exist yet uh, in the building. For example, the biometric test uh, facility we utilize several of the platform in the whole group in the area. And then uh, the chamber and the facilities we have in the future or that they have in the future physical technology. So we have to go to the panels in order to um, qualify these parts. 
an affordable condition that we have in the pandemic institution is uh, essential in the of China to establish facilities that we can capitalize on as a research uh, institute and that also previously can uh, use in their own uh, purposes. So we already have the full adequate chamber uh, in and we're also we also procure a small, this small one, uh, back in chamber that we can use for qualifying this one. So now see what we want and uh, and then we should go some of the other products that we have because aside from the this computer itself, of course again the important part is the kind of data that we can provide to the stakeholders. So over the next one of the water we need it more than uh, 10,000 images of the Philippines and some parts of the Earth. And one in the EPC, a lot of things, for example, the protection of the Earth, you know, the exclusion, the satellite, and then uh, this one is the first image by the water pointing in the night before the Philippines. Unfortunately, there was a cloud formation, so we're just seeing a lot of clouds <laughs> and some typhoons moving in the Pacific. So, of course, we also take a lot of uh, photos of the uh, agricultural areas and the coastal areas that we have. So, visually, you can see all the features of the Philippines. But importantly for us, in the research that we want to embark on is one that tells in the remote sensing. So, a simple, for example, the extent of blood after a typhoon and using a more, what call this, understandable data. So for example, this one, the Philippines flooded area. So if you have a before photo of that one, you can already compare to the use the visual guide for your asking ground. And for example, this uh, island, uh, the island, we can show how the development of the island is uh, ongoing or how much extent of the build up is going to be established on that island. And with that simple color coded remote uh, sensing data, we can already tell the story in a more um, instant manner. So, what are the other activities that we are embarking on in the future? So, uh, later, I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, two satellites that we are developing in the space and the program that we have in the institution. And another thing that I want to mention is that we try to contact uh, astronauts on board the National Space Station using the amateur band. And there is a snippet of that uh, moment when the students ask their questions to the astronauts. Uh, there's no other thing that it's other things that we should be checking out. But I think the important takeaway here is that if, if we were hoping that it helps inspire the students in the future um, um, engineers and scientists that we have, we could work in these kind of endeavors. And hopefully now we're talking to the astronauts space so maybe in the future you know what's talking down to us in the Philippines. But the way I imagine maybe <laughs> our astronaut will have all this kind of sponsor you know as if you say by the maybe that's funny but yeah right there in the space. But uh, I mean uh, uh, but the important thing is that we have our own um, you know engineering scientists up there who need for the mission of the or not really what it is, of course. So, uh, just to summarize it, you know, uh, in the sort of time, but uh, uh, we're, we have a lot of plans to develop um, all the necessary modules in order for us to take the, this development of the next So, we're planning to build um, test systems, computers on board that can help us move this energy towards uh, the future of development. So again, as uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, we are really hoping to have our own uh, space agency uh, here in the Philippines because the important thing for us is to help us um, um, embark on more um, on this projects that we provide hopefully more impact to the society and to the economy. And this kind of, uh, I guess one of the takeaways from this presentation is that this will not be possible without the help of stakeholders doing all the movement for this uh, development and uh, other things to make it successful. So we at the university and in the academy are doing our part in terms of research and providing the kind of uh, technology to make the mission successful. But of course without the local university to help us, that is uh, policy and agency 
provide a roadmap as we have to do this. So, so there's a few more slides here. Uh, just to show you some of the examples of the products that are being done or facilitated by SQL products coming out from these space stations and that kind of For example, the camera posts that we have actually GPN uh, started this small sensors for their scientific uh, mission in the field. And then, of course, the aerial monitors that we now use is used for uh, infrared measurement of space uh, back then, but now it's being used in the world of the But of course, as we look forward, we're looking at systems that will keep uh, the advantage, of, for example, the orientation of the needs and the development, like uh, UAVs for. Uh, for this drug uh, delivery or even more sensitive And then, of course, uh, another way of interacting with the space is in that the virtual reality. And maybe the way we can traverse the ground itself will be easily uh, affected by the developers in the space. And maybe not only on the ground, but the way we can add it. So, maybe that's one of the things we can do. But of course, in the Philippines, we hope you know, we can do satellites that can provide. More value than like, you know, in and other satellites and kinds of things. And a way of sending the satellites into space. So, as mentioned earlier, of finding the function of SpaceX is doing the whole rocket um, um, projects in the orbit. But even the Philippines have something like that. <laughs> Again, maybe we find it by a lot of partners. Uh, and of course, we can go into some more sci fi kind of organization and go into Mars. But again, in the Philippines, really, more than this thing, it's more about, again, sending these computers into space, providing the data uh, to the Philippines. And it's not always going to be it's better, but for us, the perspective is also looking at it uh, in smaller or factors, but in tandem with other smaller computers. So maybe in the future, a lot of other institutions or private companies will have their own microsystems and they have their own resources. So let me end my slide with this one. So this will be with a uh, photo of all the development issues we had. So it's like an Arctic crack type crack fracture. So this is what we call a mock-up. So you will need your system before you can go to your computer to the design work or simulation. You have to plan it out in a more traditional fashion than the architecture. And I love this photo so much because who are the photos? Uh, a, part of a year and a half later than the States. So let's all be sort of stars and work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim and Dallas, and then there's a fan and the speakers to be more crisp for the audience. The next speaker on our initiative is the satellite project manager of the British program and is one of the persons behind the creation of my finished his Master of Engineering in Space Engineering from Kyushu Institute of Technology. From the U.S. Yes, he's got a So in front of you is a cube thing. It's a cube satellite. Of the actual flight model that we send on space, it's from the Bhutan, the Philippines, and from the Malaysia. Now, this small thing will be a big thing soon. Because this mission will not last on space, but the future sustainable space. 
uh, program. And uh, what, what do I, why do I say that this thing will be going to be a big thing soon? Uh, because this little thing can is a low cost, uh, sa low cost satellite that we can be able to send to space. So we, when we started this uh, development, uh, it was going to be hard. And yes, if, if, if there's someone that will be going to be hard, then we develop this uh, satellite. Uh, but what we found out is this satellite, this small satellite, can be used for educational platform and proliferation of education. So education that will be able to make a human resources to sustain the space program. Because otherwise, uh, the pictures that we're taking on space from our own satellite will just be able to steal. We will not be able to proliferate our knowledge and know-how to build the satellite. So, uh, when, we, when we launch this uh, satellite in space, so the, 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 the one milestone that we achieve is uh, the, uh, when, when this satellite passes to the ground stations, when it is deployed, is this noise. That noise might be annoying, but it contains information. So when the satellite passes, it serves a, it serves as a heartbeat. So and at the same time, it also contains information that can be decoded as uh, elementary and other information incorporated on that uh, what we call CW force mode. So when, when, when this satellite was deployed and one of the questions that or comment that I saw on Facebook is we already got the micro satellite in space, then why we go to nano satellite? Okay. So we already go to a 50 kilogram satellite and then why we go down to one kilogram? So the answer is of course, it's low cost. It can be used in educational platform. Imagine, uh, with respect to Diwata, uh, Diwata it's a micro satellite. Uh, it's much more complicated and big. And it's much more high cost than Pixar. If you build the micro satellite to complicate education, you will build nine things, for example. But if you are able to, if you able to break up the micro satellite into a cube, which is a fraction of that cost, you can be able to nine times five things. You can be able to make a know how to build the satellite. Since the, the process of making the satellite is the same as making as the micro satellite. Second is, uh, you can put an experimental module and technology demonstrations. A module or a commercial of the shell that never been flying space will be put on that. So if you put that kind of experimental module into a high cost satellite and then it will not work, then it's a waste of money. And, and unless you will put it in a low cost satellite, so you will, you will see in whether if that's successful, then you can use it for more much for much more uh, better experiments. So for result is constellation is possible. So if you have a budget of this and you want a much uh, a better release time, for example of communication, you can build 20 and put it on constellation. And one thing is development is short. We just made this cube in, in one year. I think we delayed two 
months so it's just two months is delayed so but the target to be the satellite is just one year strictly so they're trying to make a new a standard that keeps actually be developed in one year and it can be used as a milestone for a company to uh, build the first homemade cube sets that we are targeting next year So the first program is, consists of the first one from the other country. The first two where I used to be lead of the team, and the first three were currently launching this year their their satellites, and we're participating on the first one. So these programs provide an opportunity to learn the entire process of the satellite cycle, from mission planning up to the satellite disposal. And this one will lead on the sustainable the foundation for the sustainable space program. Now. Each country and to create an international network of transportation assist uh, and to assist the human space. So, in the first program, we already have a ground stations. This is a continuous collaboration with the country. Now, if you have a satellite, mo, whether it's built here, the other satellite the station on the other part of the country, since this is amateur ground space stations, they can accommodate and get the data or they can make an update of that. So, we have a network of ground stations. So this is the advantage that we have when we join the BIRDS project. Now this is the flight model of uh, the Maya one. So from that knowledge, we know how to build from outside up to the inside and know how to make the design of the satellite. And the new development was taught to us how to make the satellite in one year. So, process will be simple. We will use the heritage as much as possible. So, we took a time to research what component is already in space. If not, we will go forward for, for, for testing such as vibration, uh, vibrations, and thermal vacuum just to verify that this commercial operation of, commercial of the component will work on space. And we use, we work on this as, as close as possible, that we are trying to replicate it. So the team room, so the level of the ground station and testing facility will be as near as possible. To so avoid emails, to avoid messages, so if we need to just go right through that person without waiting an answer for an email or a message. If you want to test this, if you want to test this team, just go to facility. So we're bounded by 30, 30 meter radius when you work on that uh, center. So the team is composed of two females. So either it's still in Kyushu, so to finish uh, doctor, and we have three, uh, we have four Bhutans, and two Malaysians, and a Japanese. So we divide it in a certain uh, subsystem when we work on that. And this one is multi disciplinary. Not at all, not, not all is electronics and mineral engineering. Two of them is a civil engineer, and one of them is a bachelor's degree. So we are a some sort of multidisciplinary. So one of them is also a mechanical engineer. So this is the uh, development happened when we are. This is behind the scene of what happened during development. So we have the mission dimension piece, the preliminary design, the critical design, the flight model, and security. Yeah, so this is all the stages that we have to come to the development. And this is the actual stages that I created in summarize when we develop that way. So as you see, everything is very compressed in a year. So ang sabi na sa akin is may utak pa kami ng two months kasi yung pas kami ng one year because of that delay of something. So this is the actual thesis. When I was assigned as a project manager, the satellite should be targeted to be finished by December when we start the kickoff meeting by November. But when I see that there's a civil engineer we need to learn the electronics and programming, the, the, pro the problem is we have that red line. So we projected that we have finished the satellite by programming. And we will start to finish the MDR by one time, but except for the PDR because there will be a learning curve with the other team. We cannot integrate things because others are still learning. So that's 
what is what the real behind the scene when we go to satellite. So of course, honestly, there's some mistakes with the design. Of course, it will not be that sa labas because it's the final product that we have. So there will be mistakes, and the mistakes will be uh, agreed because maglalas ka dun sa time na yon. And then there will be an experience like the design crash and these mistakes on the publication side. So yun yung uh, sa bago na nakikita nakikita nyo kasi reality ngayon sa publication side at saka sa partner na big sign. So one, one cause of that is the language barrier because we play on the Japanese word. And di ba iba yung culture na yung language na may partner. So this is Fusion Institute of Technology when I, when I was graduated in my and we took the Maya one there. And this is the University of the Philippines, and we will do and try to finish the flight model by 2020 of March next year. And maybe soon, we will not stop with one, but rather with two or three or more. And as a summary, uh, summary of our things, uh, I'm under with the project on the step up, which is the Swiss technology. Uh, proliferation and education through partnership, uh, university partnerships. And this is the eighth scholar where the secretary is mentioned. So, pwede niya tandaan mga mukha niya because this team will be the first eight scholars that we will send the first homemade satellite of the country. So, mission statement is just like that. So, uh, and uh, that's this one. <laughs> We try to uh, lay down the foundation, the sustainable space program of the country, and we accumulated the human resources and industries. So, this is the business core in terms of space, and business leads with industry. And the main one component of that industry is the human resources, that knowledgeable and know how to do these things. That's all of my presentation for you. Our next speaker is the Secretary for Research and Development of DOS. She founded from UD Diliman University is Professor Quill at the Electrical and Electronics Engineering Institute, specializing in speech and audio signal processing, time frequency analysis and synthesis, and artificial intelligence. She served as our Executive Director of the Fisher in the United of 2015, the youngest and first female dean of the UD College of Engineering and was the Executive Director of the UD National Engineering Center. She was the first Dato Banato Fellow of the University of California, Berkeley, and has been the recipient of several awards in engineering and education. She was the proponent and first program leader of the Engineering Research and Development for Technology, a capacity building program that offers graduate scholarships in all fields of engineering, faculty, and infrastructure development and collaborative R&D for the year consortium of seven universities. It's paid to us the Science for Change programs of the OSP. It's welcome, Dr. Vena Christina Herrera. Thank you very much this year for organizing this event and uh, congratulations in advance. Um, I really talk about R&D for the human space industry. It has already been explained to you why we need to have a human space agency. So I will not develop that. Are you all convinced? Yes? Okay. So I, need to, I don't need to explain that. So I'm now going to go on the second slide, the investments, engagements, and achievements in space development. USC has already invested 7.5 billion the space program from 2010 to 2018. We have more than a thousand projects in all of this, and we have already uh, people who are capable of working in the space agency, and they number 5,400 people. Yeah. So, the funded programs, the 
are going to become part of the space race. These programs develop satellites and acquired data, establish ground facilities, and do connection and process information. In fact, the assets of the space agency, the space agency, we now have 25 facilities all funded by the Department of Science and Technology. Sabi nga sa akin mo, ano, I was talking to the cross-cosmos in Russia. Kasi sila lang ituwala na magkakaroon tayo sa space agency. Kaya to explain to them all the facilities that we have. And they said, parang pakasilap na naman ng faith in the space agency. Kasi, kung nagpundang din yung space agency, ang facilities, 4,000 new resources, 7,000 new resources, and then they like more than that. It was a faith in the space agency. Of course, we're still looking at that. Faith in the space agency. These are the very big, some understand so that it will be science-based. Next slide. They've already mentioned the field development areas and the direction of the Philippine Space Development Program. Um, what is the Philippine Space Act? The centralized agency, the Philippine Space Agency, will cover six KPAs. So first, it's national security and development. Now, one of the highlights is mentioned in this is synthetic aperture radar, or SAR. That we already procured, and this is basically a cooperation with National Defense, National Security Council, National Defense Watch Council, Department of Agriculture and Farm, among other stakeholders, and of course, the Department of For the hazard management climate studies, uh, we have before what was called the project law. I was the executive director of the Chef and Life Assembly. It was not a project, but we had more than 20 programs. We fell in love with the name such that all the other programs were we'll falling under the law. What kind of programs do we have? Like we have DCAP, Agency in Engage and Paris. DCAP is basically being able to figure out how to do drought, how to do a drought, how to do a drought, how to do a farm, how to do a drought. So things like that, we're all under the program of law. And then another one is the uh, under the space research and development, we have been launching micro satellites, the flood, land satellite, the sun. And then the Nina Sabin Secretary in our meeting at NEVA, we are going to launch another one for 2022. Maybe we will not be able to find a vision for the new one. Since it was launched in 2018, we have until 2022 to launch another one. Sabi ko pa nila kay Alice, let us launch one in 2020. And then, the reason why we are here is because of the space industry. When you talk about capacity building, people think about facilities. What is the other facilities? You're very fine. And then you think about the human resources. We have about 5,000 of them. The question is how do we bring them to this people? Then, what is the value of the industry? Hindi na kaya ang kapangyayon. So, pagkakaliit ko lahat ng kaka-industry na yun, tumayin ko kayo parang mga ilangan na. Please stand up, all those from the industry. Ayun! Ang ating ang industry. Thank you very much. And, ah, uh, maliit ko ba yung matanus na ko? Kayo ang baka ng ating ating Human resource, yes? <laughs> okay. So, the next one is in the area of education and awareness. When we were starting out in the concept of human resource agency, we had to convince a lot of other government agencies. How is the DOS convincing you? But then, we have a lot of agencies. 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 Now we're in charge of the education and so on and so forth. We have to convince all of them that we are unified and come up with this one program. But then we also have to make the kids aware of the space space. And that's why the US Science Education Institute, which is supervised by Lisa Carroll and Robert, and they do all of these things. They have a satellite, they have a satellite, they have a satellite, just to get the kids aware and in concept. And then, of course, international cooperation. 
evolution. Our we have had relationships with the private university, the public university, the Institute of Technology. It was so exciting and then we went to JAXA. And uh, the actually in the same signing and the event was Cosmos, the Russian space agency. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, in March uh, we are going to uh, There are some things that we don't plan to do here yet, like launch the microsatellite or another satellite. But we're relying on other countries like Russia, Japan, and maybe India to launch other satellites for us. So we need to have a little bit of approach. Now, next slide, please. What is your opportunities in satellite packaging? As part of the government's mission to bring the space into the country and enhance long term growth potential, the USC encourages local firms to generate R&D. We believe that an ecosystem of locally developed technology and thinking of expertise in space science would propel the space industry to catch up with our location leaders. Here's a value chain model for satellite industry. The upstream up segment covers the activities prior to launch. Here, industries engage in levels, polymers, fuel, and energy, semiconductors, and electronics, and fire. Our aim for this segment is that we can develop these industries to be able to supply the products if I needed an add to those products in their portfolio. I don't know if you were listening to all the speakers ahead of me. Did you know the term, alam niya ba ngayon yung isa, C-O-T-S? Dapat memorize mo yun. Conversion of the shell. Kaya ating mga satellites ay mga small satellites. We don't expect them to last for a very long time. Therefore, we don't need to put new space grade devices or components. We can use off the shelf. Kaya mo na yan. Dahil mo na yan, ibig sabihin, wala na mong dito na pa sa Philippines na magawa ng space grade na mga components. Except for maybe two or three. But ibig sabihin nun, our industry can produce products for that space rays for the small number of satellites and other satellites. So I hope that na figure out na ang dito in aking component na rin na pwede na explore. Because soon, our researchers are going to knock on the doors and ask me to collaborate with them. For the last three seconds, all of the cities that are engaged with the in-orbit satellite are covered. From operating the satellite, the operating data, story, and graffiti, and using the data. Industries engage in ICT, graphical information services, security, software development, and other services industries with potential benefit. Interfacing with both segments in the space agency and international regulatory bodies is open to happen. Of course, firms and individuals who invest from this in these industries will get the benefits from this new market opportunity. Um, we want local firms to develop import sensitive technologies. We want to end the current technology scenario that this import lag, import again lag, again and then the Philippines is experiencing this. We did not have to do this in the market, but this is an opportunity for us. We also want to upgrade the competence of local industries and to integrate the developments in space to complement their processes and products. So, I'm not going to do what I'm doing for you, right? I will show you the what, but I don't know if you can see it in the middle, right? I'm going to just do what I'm doing for you, and I'm going to do this next slide. We have the scientific payloads, the optical parts, the acquisition telescope, the open spectrum imaging, the electric crystal, the tunable field filter, next slide. We have cameras, the wide field camera, the middle field camera, and the acquisition camera. And we have to do this out of the way, Kaya sa ating mga physics institutes sa universities, hindi na kami optics people. Sila yung ating pinakamaraming PhDs na mga. Siguro pwede na kami na street crew once na nag-shift na sa pagkawa ng mga telescopes. Rather than the things that they are doing now. Next slide. Talaga na fix natin yung naman. Yung receivers, UHF, lahat ng high-tech board, transmitters, and antenna. These are currently being made in the Philippines. And we know that some companies even have the best in facilities for this. So we just need to partner together on them. Thanks, Mike. Out of the 
So you mentioned the whole system. The UPS was in the module, something that was done in the module, and the actual view, and the model of the other school. Except that we have to put the last one, all the others are giving you some parts. You just need to put it in the middle. Next slide. You have the power control unit, battery, and solar cell. These are also being used by our industries today. But they have not come together to create a space industry. Next slide. These are the modules developed for the B. Explain that as African in the Aries and Sakali and now for them. Next slide. The part, how much you really pay for the external output is all the time. How do you have to do this with this? The question is this. How do you do it? So what we're going to present to you is the science for change program. Next slide. The science for change program. So I'm just impressed with it. Change is coming. But we In the past, there are 2,000 universities in the country. USC in 2016 only funded 85 universities. Where are the rest? In the plan of the USC, we need to have inclusive innovation. Meaning to say, all those who have faculty members, students, Maybe they just need somebody to lead them for our We are going to define all of this under the science of change. But we must please set in the same model. I will reserve the other parts for academic and other form. Then we're going to talk about two sub programs under science of change that we sell back to agency. Let me start with the program. So, in the past, the universities will do a research, then they expect previously to adapt that research Never happens. So this time around, in the six states, this is a problem I want to solve. Again, they go to the industry and they say, we will solve the problem. It could be the academy, it could also be the government research and development decisions. Once they have an agreement or a partnership of solving the problem, the US will fund the academic we only require two things for industry. One, 20% contribution in cash or in time. Second, the promise that you are going to adopt the technology after the research. So, here we have several university representatives. So, how many more university representatives have research and development? So that the will get the point. So I'm happy to say. So later, I'll do some video. If you think there is a problem that you want to solve, and there is a university here that will have to solve the problem, engage them, submit a proposal to the USC. Next slide. The funding mechanism for the trade is that we only give you up to five million per project. The project can last one year to two years, it's up to you. But at the end of the day, we require that to reduce the technology. So that's one funding mechanism. Payroll means collaborative research and development to leverage through the economy program. It's an industry academic partnership that is made sweeter with funding. Next slide. About the business innovation <coughs> research and development. Uh, the thing is, our percentage of the GDP expenditure of our economy, which is an international measure, is 0.14%. For the developing country, you need 1% of value to happen. In the last eight years, our funding for our university increased by a factor of six. So from 1 billion, we are now at 6 billion. But we need not to We need industry to also do r &D. But then r &D is a very specific position. We understand by industry, the companies are accepted. But the job who wants to start research and development. That's it. We can assure them. So, we said maybe it's time for the government to help the industry 
start doing research in the And this is your business innovation in science and technology and business. Basically, we are going to teleport you to the RD by taking up initially 70% of the cost of the RD. So we have a list of items that you can charge to the market, and you are seeking to find 70% of that as a beginning. After two years, you are going to start to gain the Philippine government at 0%. So the government is going to pay at the cost of money and you also have to take some of the risks in the beginning of the research. Take note that this program is only for those companies who are seriously considering the research and development. This is not for companies who want to import a new technology so that they want to rely on. That is not research. Our objective is that once you start doing research, you will continue doing research. So I hope that some of the industries present here today would hit the call of the proposals for North Korea and this. We fund this on a year-round basis. The turnaround time for Korea is a lot short, it's maybe two months to three months, but this is about six months to eight months. So the proposals, uh, we just download our proposal uh, format from our website and then we send it. And if you need us to introduce you to the correct academic partners, we don't want to do that for you. If you want us to hold a particular forum just for your sector of the industry, we can also do that. You just let us know, we will gather the right percentage of researchers uh, and uh, people from academy so that they can address the particular problem for your university. Let me give you some examples of payback. One company wanted to be able to detect what uh, are diseases. So they are working on the University of Southeast and Philippines. This is Eva, what are Another company um, is the largest egg producer. They wanted to be able to produce something from the egg shells that they were working So the University of Philippines is doing that. As far as I'm not just working with the Technological Institute of the Philippines for uh, artificial intelligence for medicinal plants, and so on and so forth. And then for the this program, we have not had any award yet. We are still looking for that very good opportunity for our this program. In fact, tomorrow we are traveling to Lacan to have a to visit uh, four pharmaceutical companies, and we are hoping that we will be able to run for the first program of this program and the university. Now, please find me, let me tell you this story. When I was in the University of the Philippines, we had one partner, uh, Aztec, our companies. The founder was here a while ago, two years ago. I was just reminded of what he did. You know, in 1996, because they were afraid that uh, Hong Kong would be given back to China, they decided to move our AD production, everything from Hong Kong to the Philippines. So in 1997, they were the Philippines. But they were no longer the Hong Kong University. They put the University of the Philippines, led by the Hong Kong University. And in return, we get a professor of share. And uh, we also got a new laboratory from our employees, which is exactly the same as their laboratory. So at 10 p.m., when we were talking about the agenda, our students were in the company in this way as it is. In that way, we were able to build up a new resource for our employees. About three or four years into the program, I decided I wanted to continue with that program. So I told them, may I come? One master's scholarship a year. I have a student who will be a scholar for us. And he said, Your field is digital signal processing, it's not power and control. So I'm asking for scholarships now. And I said, I will show you later. Ask me again after three years. So I followed 
very good student. And I told him, you are going to be signing for the of the phone of the phones. This will be the fastest process. Because our computers are faster than their computers. And you know, today, it is the standard for controlling the power of the phones. But this one is only, and second story is this. About 12 years after we started the company, she asked them, we were approached by their competitor, their American. He said, what did you get from us? We could do everything we could have from them and more. He said, why? Well, you know, before, more than 50% of the design of our electronics were being done in the United States. But 12 years later, only less than 10% of the power electronics design were being done. Yes, we are part of this. It's not a good thing. I would hope is that in the space race, we are going to do something like what we do for our economics. But we are going to do all of you to find our lives. So I hope that you will avail of this radar and we will collaborate with our academic partners. And that is my challenge to the industry. Let us hear any of you. President of the Seven Doctors and Electronics Industries in the Philippines of the The association representing the electronics industry, which makes up $13.7 billion, or 52% of total Philippine exports, and directly employs 3.2 million indirect and indirect employees. He is a licensed electrical engineer for the delivery and goes to a doctor of business administration degree from Delta Delasal University. He is an expert fellow in world transmission. Six Sigma, Balance Four Bar, and Triple Productive. Friends, please give a warm round of applause to Dr. Dan Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. for the invitation and for the flexibility. I'm supposed to be the second reactor, but uh, um, I have to take off, so we need the first time. All right. Uh, what you said, you yeah, have shared with you is a mouthful. You know, I'll just jump from one topic to the other to give you my reaction on the presentation. Well, first of all, uh, Senator Director of Electronics and Industry, yes, we represent the industry. Electronics is into everything, anything and everything. Um, but we also partner with uh, government and academia. Um, and for instance, well, if you just look at our membership, uh, for example, what we have about 300. 40 members by now, and about uh, 100 of those are the hardcore manufacturing guys. 104 years are in the associate uh, member category, and they supply the products and services. And about 30, 32 are from the academy. So we do have uh, a lot of uh, academic institutions that are members of the This is really uh, an environment that allows us to partner with uh, institutions, not just in the zone, but also in science and the update of the information and All right. Um, so the nice thing about our industry is that whenever we talk about, um, you know, a need, uh, a product, uh, we always look at it from both sides, the customer and the supplier side. Uh, clearly, if you talk about the space industry, I guess the customer uh, side of it, I mean, what I mean is uh, the space industry is the space agency as a customer. That's pretty straightforward. We manufacture hardware. Okay, so, whether you're talking about uh, you know, controllers or telescopes or drivers, we produce it. Right? But the other part, I think, that's even more important is that on the supply side, of course, uh, earlier, you said that what does the uh, what do the satellites provide? The data. But we also need data. For example, um, when we talk about our roadmap and uh, the areas that we want to get into, whether it's clean agriculture, uh, disaster aversion prevention, uh, then the data that's provided to these satellites will 
from the benefits of the industry. So, what do we need then to uh, create an environment uh, that's uh, right for a space uh, industry? Well, to begin with, I guess the recognition, not just by the USD and the Avenue, that there is potential in such a thing as a space industry. Uh, to be honest with you, when we developed our roadmap, we didn't include the space industry. And that's our uh, fault, right? Uh, we came up with this industry roadmap, which was funded by DTI uh, and administered by DOS into the church. And so what it is really, because the nature of our industry is, uh, well, it's skewed mostly to 17 countries. 70% of the $32.7 billion that we export are in uh, 17 countries. And the thing about it, it's not even the uh, front-end waiver type. It's uh, we import waivers and uh, we test the sample and practice for the particular circuits. The 30% is divided into eight other sectors. To name a uh, few, uh, we have consumer electronics, automotive electronics, um, uh, telecommunications and radar, you know, but we don't have space electronics as a sector itself. So that's really, as I said, uh, a recognition and an admission that we haven't really considered that seriously up until now. But, I'll be done before then. <laughs> so, one of the things that we can do, you know, is you said here was actually uh, uh, asking for our commitments as an industry to belly up and uh, support this endeavor. We're there, we certainly support it. But some of the things that would be doing, of course, would be, you know, how do you create a, a, an industry that's right for uh, space, right? Space exploration, space advice, and everything. Well, uh, you said you have mentioned a few of the requirements. You know, there's the education part. Well, we did talk about some of the, uh, you know, um, particular expertise, subject matters that we need to develop. There's a lot of them, actually. I mean, I always, uh, I always talk about these guests, you know, having space cadets and rocket scientists. Literally, it would be rocket scientists, right? But not only that, the traditional mechanical, electronics engineers, uh, data scientists, uh, programmers, there's a whole slew of uh, expertise that we need to develop in Academy. And the thing about it is that, while well, we might say, for example, that we have to produce mechanical engineers and electronics engineers. The reality is, when you talk about what the academy or what the universities churn out, they don't really need what the industry needs. But that's one of the things that we need to do. What does the space industry need in terms of the specific uh, expertise and subjects that uh, we would need to advance the industry, right? And so uh, the other part of that is, you know, the, the government part in terms of regulations and policies. How do we make it conducive? I mean, it's nice that DOSP has these programs, but, you know, we're talking about space, we're talking about human, uh, humans being set up in space. What are the kinds of policies and procedures that support that in terms of regulatory uh, uh, requirements? And so, I guess what I'm saying is, you didn't pass the time anymore. Is that, you know, <laughs> we need to understand what we need. We don't know what we don't know. It's nice to talk about uh, microsatellites and, you know, uh, advances that we've made, but I think we need to sit down with USEC GEF, the experts that we have today, and really draw a roadmap. I don't know if we have a roadmap already, but we need to have a roadmap that understands how we get from point one to point two and really grow this industry. And I, I think I'm, I'm uh, uh, really heartened by the fact that I see a lot of people in this room, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of you want to be rocket scientists, that's really good. But we have to start with the basics and understand what we need to be doing. You know, in 1969, Neil Armstrong said what, you probably remember this, right? One small step for man, Directly for mankind. I think we're at that first step. And again, maybe I'm being naive. There's a lot of work that's being done.
but certainly for very stress and service. So from an industry uh, perspective, what I'd like to commend is to sit down with the OST and academy, I don't know, a task force, a committee, a space committee, and we understand where we're at today, what we need to do to advance the space in the Philippines. You have our commitment from the industry perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chica. Thank you, by, uh, Dr. Parinian, uh, Dr. Chica, for a quick awarding to the So, 
That's my civil message. It can be done, but it's expanded, and it's good, and it's good. Thank you. Thank you, Father Mokanaga. Our next speaker is an associate professor from the Dallas Southern University, who has served the university in various capacities, including being the director of the DLS in Dr. Bums. Uh, 
and of course support the community. Now our university uh, follows this practices uh, as what has been uh, discussed. We have collaborative research and deployment. We learn the technology from partner and university, universities abroad. We sustain the development program by creating scholarships, uh, meaning pool of experts, and give the scholarships to attract and provide students opportunities for developing the technology. Although there are challenges to meet, namely, uh, as has been described, uh, local development development of satellite modules, which will be uh, done here. And this needs house facilities, meaning the testing facilities. We need that one to be locally uh, available. So equipments for these test facilities should be provided. And then, of course, uh, the safety issues and security. This is very important. <coughs> What will happen to the uh, satellite after it, the, the life span is expired? So monitoring and tracking of the satellite is very important. Uh, we all know that we cannot pollute the space. Uh, as reported by King's College uh, from 1980 to 2013, there are lots of accidents happening the satellites. It, 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 we have 30 accidents caused by uh, debris, hitting uh, of debris, caused by close encounter, uh, caused by the close encounter and other objects. So our research also should consider this. Uh, monitoring and tracking our satellites in space. Uh, how can we do that? So this is a really a thing that we have to address. And, uh, Remember, uh, according to this report, uh, there are already 6,000 satellites have been placed in orbit, of which 800 are, all, are still operating. And uh, uh, to keep up, a low cost satellite means it will increase exponentially. Okay? So, what will happen to our space? Uh, this must be addressed seriously. So, how can we prepare our satellite? It malfunctions. So this is part of the research that we should take. Uh, we know NASA has robots to, 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 to repair the satellites. It's a big one. But for these huge satellites, uh, there might come a point that we will be a range of satellites coming into our uh, to us. So we have to do something now. It's good that the government has uh, this bill, uh, House Bill 637 and uh, Senate Bill 1211. Uh, hopefully, they will address the codes of conduct uh, for outer space activities. Uh, the state should have serious commitment to the outer space law, such as adherence to the administration convention and other than development codes. So, there are already existing uh, uh, legislation conventions in enforced in 1976. So it's important that our, our, our laws should follow that. And also uh, the uh, data uh, center, uh, we can develop a Philippine data center uh, or international data center uh, which we can help each other. So uh, this is very important to consider in the state of this world. And also, uh, there's already a remote sensing uh, uh, law which was mentioned. Maybe you can look at that. How does this law uh, uh, can help its other? And then the next is the local industry. Of course, you know that there's a huge market of this uh, program, uh, speech uh, program, uh, artificial intelligence development, uh, ICT, big data, data analytics. Both in agriculture, in uh, human security, uh, in medical applications, in transportation, this is a big market. Uh, I, I, I can cite you what we have, uh, which is, uh, uh, I'm proud to say that you help us in this project, the, the castle, for example. We need data uh, uh, to, to determine transports. So now, 
we have a new paradigm. Before, Katsol is taxing uh, traffic violators. Now, our new paradigm is Katsol. That's all data and processing. So, this is uh, 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 a shift that we have to, to move on. We have in type of data, and then we will process that data. So, uh, video analytics or picture or whatever kind of data we have to pass that and utilize that. Another is uh, uh, we have uh, drones, for example. So we can we can utilize the GPS of our satellites to to steer our drones. Uh, in that way, we can have swarm of drones uh, doing uh, distributions of products. Uh, for example, if the product is medical applications which need to be preserved for needs uh, immediate uh, applications, so we can use drones to transport those products. So. In other words, the space uh, technology really is the uh, big uh, market in the future. We have also our farm. We have a smart farm now, so we can we can develop uh, uh, drones flying on the farm and look at what happens to the fields. Uh, of course, with the satellite navigation, so uh, we have we can help. So once again, uh, I congratulate uh, the Department of Science and Technology for this very successful. Thank you, Dr. Lagos. Our next chapter is an ASEAN engineer and is presently the dean of the School of Electrical and Electronics Communication Engineering from Okubo. Our missionary leader, Yusek uh, Ibarra, I would just like to emphasize the request of our secretary that in the next three days we need to pray hard uh, such that the, two, the House Bill 8541 and Senate Bill 1211 will be passed and hopefully the Field Space Development Act uh, will be passed into a law and the creation of the Philippine Space Agency will materialize and this will ensure the acceleration or fast tracking of the initiatives already laid down before us and hopefully the Philippine Space Agency uh, will be created as a right agency under the WSC. And in the presentation of our user, here are the key points. So initially, uh, there is the vision of bringing space industry in our country, where in the Philippines, uh, for us to be able to be a credible player in the space race, not only in the Asian region, but globally, uh, it is one of the uh, long-term visions of our uh, user. Second is to ensure the single establishment of complementary technologies among all stakeholders uh, such as the government, the industry, the academic, and others. And also, eventually, for the local capabilities of producing uh, requisite space technology such as power management system, uh, batteries, solar cells, on top of the other parts already stated in the presentation earlier. Uh, second uh, point is that in the presentation a while ago, in the last eight years, the DOST or the national government had shown its unwavering commitment to support numerous science and technology programs focused on space in the sea. And uh, it ensures its relevance in nation building, and this was clearly exemplified with the, around 7.5 billion RD investments from year 2010 to 2018. Try to imagine the magnitude of that amount allocated by the national government for this initiative alone. The third key point is that. Uh, there are six key development areas, namely the National Security and Development, Hazard Management and de Development, Space Industry Possibility, Education and Awareness, and in that international cooperation, where for the stated six KDIs on the perspective of the academic, because I am uh, coming from the academic, the academic. Of course, uh, not to uh, mention the involvement of the industry or the business sector, 
they actually can engage and support most of the identified PDAs and for academia, uh, we in the academy must the necessary expertise, experience, capability, human resource, research laboratories, partnerships, and collaborations. The challenge is to build or to sustain what has already been built uh, by uh, the programs already laid down as uh, steered by UPG Man Group, Dr. Joel Marciano, is to sustain a critical mass of researchers, faculty, and students who will be involved in space technology to assure the sustainability of the space program. While for the industry, we know that they have the vast experience and expertise in the processing of raw materials and the manufacture of uh, various goods or products which they can apply in a specified space technology. So under the uh, academic proposition or perspective, a consortium of SUCs, state universities and colleges, and higher education institutions with the same goal of working together will surely achieve the milestones in the journey toward the realization of using this vision. And as we all know, the UPD man uh, can spirit or has already uh, taken the lead with the availability of the uh, UBC's facility in uh, trade basic this initiative and the UP has already shown great success in implementing countless programs such as the PILLIDER program, the EUPRDP program among others. The offering of advanced graduate programs such as doctoral programs and master's degree program and possibly in the future undergraduate programs on space engineering and other related disciplines can be undertaken as a primary objective of the said academic consortium and as we all know the research output to be generated through this consortium will be invaluable to the country's space program and just to give uh, some uh, slight perspective uh, during the time that I was uh, in a two week short training in India for a uh, small satellite I happened to have a short discussion with some uh, professors from Indian universities where some of their undergraduate students are already work working on thesis projects involving eco satellite undergraduate students and they are launching or having swarms of multiple eco satellites undergraduate and undergraduate. And there is no a reason why the students or the experts in the Philippines cannot duplicate it, not surpass those uh, students in India. So that uh, the industry side can be of great help in creating or crafting a uh, curricula focused on space engineering as I already stated earlier. So the problem is to be solved specifically in the thesis of the proposed uh, space engineering program should emanate from the industry to ensure that there will be end user of the result of the thesis projects of our students. And the last item is the Science for Change program as uh, discussed by Yusuf Deb, comprising primarily the travel and uh, this where uh, a challenge is thrown to us in the academy to engage industry partners or possible collaborators to solve of their uh, existing uh, problems. And DOSC is always there to support us uh, financially and to assure the success of uh, all our projects. And, uh, so, let's 
So the last thing is that we have already started with the Iwata project, the launching of the two uh, microsatellites, and the launching of the Maya 1 last August. And in the coming months, uh, we expect to have the launch of the next uh, Maya 2. I'm not sure if it's to be called Maya 2, but in the next coming years, most probably, or sooner or later, in the Philippines, we can aim to have the rocket launch facility. Because, sino mag-aabala 10 years ago, 20 years ago, kaya pala ng Pilipinas na mag-launch ng satellite. So, after 5 years or after 10 years, kung magpita-kita ulit tayo sa ang pinag-uusapan natin na ang Pilipinas ay kaya na mag-launch ng sarili niyang satellite. Hindi na tayo kailangan magbayad or uh, Mamita, Josh Facility, and Ivan Patrick. Thank you very much for being here for inviting me. Thank you. At this juncture, I'd like to invite Dr. Padini to award our speaking position to our speakers. First, Engineer Gondalas.
So from the recent events during the campus, we had a $50 million transaction. Uh, last year, we were up to almost 700. The year before that was bigger and better. The future is simply going to be bigger and bigger. That's what we're hoping. So uh, a few uh, a few industries that we're working on with now we have a four second marbles the manufacturing. So the biggest in the Philippines issue was manufacturing. MRO came second, uh, of course Air has been big for a number of things that uh, I think they celebrated almost uh so, but we also need, of course, academic uh, that role. And I just mentioned the one that will is not support in the industries. That makes it happen. It doesn't, you know, there's uh, only 77 members um, of the industry. But these 77 members comprise of a lot of support in logistics, machine equipment, and everything. And we hope to grow. Hopefully, we'll be able to entice a new SEO resident that will include, uh, of course, in the case of uh, ascension by also the energy services. We need something to move forward to. But Aerospace Industries Association is precisely that. If you are a NATCAP, I mean, an uh, AS9100 company, that means you can produce for the aerospace and uh, something in outer space. So you have the definition. So of course there's uh, 30 companies. Some of them are here ones. So of course I'm sorry I'm not going to be a doctor. There is some and we call them services and I'm going to change that. So we'll call the services for example is one of the biggest companies in the Philippines and globally you know, uh, in PC in the Philippines. Biggest producer that includes satellites. So they also produce a lot of different things that uh, will probably be useful in the future. Hopefully they will be here. So of course we have in here something like Jamco. Uh, Rockwell Company College says it's also the failures. It says so if you keep in the plane, the audience, the integration, and then you have to count 8 billion dollars. 80% of the global public production now is in the so we assume 50% of the duration market will be so all these are coming. Of course there are companies like companies like ours that here two suppliers who support the manufacturing of the payments. So they're always be there. So of course the like machine, CNC, and famous I think the biggest uh you know manufacturing in terms of CNC. They have uh, 250 machines, they have anti aerospace machine metals. Um, and we think that we do that in service technology. So service technology is one of those companies, um, it's a UK based company, based in the Philippines that was bought out by IT. So this company sends uh, parts to other states. They are the main producers for the ones or the satellites. Out of 10,000 points, only one is in the other states. That's how the selection process goes. Um, not have certified, of course, uh, first air you know, but uh, only a few uh, companies that uh, is certified for NACA and hopefully that code is one of our members that we use. So, we'll skip the, all the other ones because uh, I get this whole picture of that. So, this is a new thing uh, that we, just, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, joined. We have partnered with an Asian. Not ASEAN, but Asia um, Alliance. So, so, this is a new thing that we've done. So, Asian Aerospace Alliance. We partner with Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Singapore, Taiwan, and both in Japan with others too. So, this collaboration is to be able to produce things that we can support the industry with respect to the Europeans and the American market of components and parts. So there's a huge market potential for all the products, especially that the future agreements is intent with our countries. So that idea is collaboration between the Asian counterparts. Because in the global supply chain, for instance, you cannot 
for the beginning of it. It's impossible. So we need the help of the neighbors. Instead of doing anything, you know, we do what we do best. And we share some of the things and we you know, co-partner. For example, when we establish those substantial gaps. So roadmap, I think this one we were planning to we're we crafting the roadmap, but I think most of this uh, we were mentioned, so we try to go uh, quicker. So of course, um, basically what the association. So anyways, I put SIDP so, anyways, uh, basically what we plan to do is try to figure out how to grow the industry by growing the supply, completing the supply chain, providing also the manpower needed, as mentioned by some of the athletes. And, uh, there's a need, there's a huge gap. Uh, Bakora, the bar mentioned the 5,000 people. And the industry needs a lot of these people that knows what the rest is. Yes. You know, uh, knows what uh, the things that have involved. Uh, we right now I think we employ more than 3,200 people in the world. So we need a lot of these people. Not only the manufacturing, but the other sector that provides software development and all the other things that money goes to the world. Of course, the mission of uh, the association is to be a major hub. You know, um, in the set, in the, in the, in the, in the local supply chain for the aircraft industry. Initially, we were targeting only commercial um, aircraft market. But now, I think there's, of course, not just that, there's a huge demand for uh, the force in space, there's a huge demand also for defense. Um, the Philippine military has also wanted to do some programs. So, I think this was some of this we discussed before of what I needed in education and skills development. Um, so currently right now, what are what are big needs that they need? Of course, as you know, home controls has been around here for 30 years and doing flight controls, um, secondary flight controls, a lot of different things, the best work uh, controls. So this company has basically shown that in terms of Philippine manufacturing, um, we, are, we are one of the best. So, I mean, this is the biggest factory market uh, in one of the other operations. And then growing, the expanding. But unlike before, before it was 80% of the recent market, the times are changing. They want to go 80% by 20% of the What does that mean? It's a sharing of risk to some of us as suppliers. To supply more home and for other people who might be interested because the times are not the same as before. People who machine, do machine, they're good, they do it, they become part of the situation. And so that's the idea. For them, they do design. So what they're good at, they do. So you always want to be there what you're good at and not what you're not good at. In fact, you do everything, you cannot do everything. So even the automotive industry is becoming a year 0.5. They need a four to take care of the land, somebody less than you. So it's always going to be on that level. So some of the other things that we uh, introduced here, of course, for, for the A350, for those of you who have been to the A350 or have been to the A350 plane or Airbus, so all the galleys inside are producing the buildings. So all things also are, are done here. The seats for free will not be done. It's not yet, but it's coming. So we're hoping. So addition to the line, so currently right now, the left one, the top one that I'm taking, just to show you. But at least we'll get that. But uh, we do have wire harness production here. We do have seats. We do have uh, auction systems packages now. So these are the new before wish to be put on the list now in some of this. There are some that still might be able to do, you know, water resistance, uh, thermal power management might be coming soon, and hopefully, of course, the easy one might be. So, 
so still a huge market. Uh, before they were mentioning about the satellites or the uh, seats, uh, 800, 800, 800. Within this state, not only within the uh, commercial real estate, but the whole industry is quite huge. The rent failure, the backlog is still uh, for the next thing, this is 3.7 trillion dollars. It's still quite a huge production. So, if you look at it, if you look at Asia Pacific, we control 36% of the global demand still. So, all the, you know, if you notice, all the Asian countries are buying and brand new things. We're going Hong Kong, China. They're feeding up expanding because of like before. Um the buyer and one thing is so very easy to see. Everyone can fly. So it is the low the, the new advent of the local schedules changes the local thing. If you notice also the frequency of the flights, there are a lot more flights than in bus to it's a bus. And the bus goes plus six times a day, eight times a day, twelve times a day. As the population grows, it will grow in the So what is the value of a different thing? So their face amount for thirty-eight percent, which the government will not get like because these are too big for the ship. You might get a smaller system for that. Agents, as you know, it's very difficult. It's possible. Some people are doing it now in the Philippines. No, agent components. But it is not easy. This is the, this is the highest end of the machine when you go back to the agent components. Systems, that would be like uh, manual systems, uh, most of the technical systems. So the fact of 40%. If you are this, 11%. Um, all this kind of space is one of the leaders, the leading company in which hopefully eventually in the future we might be able to do something which of course if we can really help to really develop you know the, the keyword in the industry innovation innovation changes a lot of things this won't happen if the innovation of the material for composites wasn't intended that changed the whole world game into the whole world game of changing or replacing all the feet of the aircrafts so for the next 10 years, there's going to be bank lines in that. The bank lines is quite huge. Because, because that innovation is a, uh, something that is not new. Because it has to change. So in years, it's only 6%. But 6% of uh, 200, 300 million dollars aircraft is still quite huge. It's a huge market for us. We can start small, but we gradually should grow into it. Sorry, this is like a, this is like a table of what we want to do, uh, what is the supply chain and what are the gaps. So, sorry about that. so some of the things that they were discussing before, we have to make sure to reduce the cost of parts for some of the material ones. Is the distribution of material, because we don't have global material as mentioned before. That's one key element that we have. Um, unfortunately, 99 percent less. As we import them, so that minor even gets up something like that. Specialized processing. In aerospace, everything has to be somehow special, certified. You know, there's so many certification systems. Um, if you get that, like for example, we do the idea that we get that kind of certification, it takes 10 months to get everything to get the company back to. So it takes a long time to really get certified. Then, so finishing process again, there's a lot of things still needed. So MR segment, now I, I got this data from uh, CI, so um, CI was including uh, of course MR of the Philippines. When we were trying to do this presentation, we still have like that, so I asked if uh, we can share the information for our chat. So please, if I can say, maybe if this type of presentation, then it's uh, that we copied it. So, a lot of the uh, new aircraft, you know, I think 
service are the smaller than the 18 point piece and 77 or call the single line as it's a number of the line. These are the fastest selling aircraft in the world. Currently, right now, average what they want to reach is 63 and 64 roughly per minute. So that is the production level before the two, three years ago was only about 36. They're now up to 40 something a month. To get to 64 in the next few years, the demand is a demand for this is quite a So, again, this is the biggest huge demand. The 8350, the 777, of course, what they're selling, the 787 is only doing about 11 to 12 a month. The 8350 is roughly around between 7 to 8 a month average. But they should be up to about maybe 10 to 12 a month. So, it's not easy to ramp up when you talk about the demand. It's roughly between 1.8 million to 2.4 million parts in the United States. Okay, if the last part didn't come, it won't be the right. So, so the United growth of their local carriers in the region is driving a huge demand also for the MRO. So all, all the things that were bought before and I mean the two ones that have been bought now have to be fixed. They don't fly on the time. They have to be grounded and service. For the service demand, the Tansa a few years ago when I talked to them, they needed 18,000 people to be in the room. That's a lot of aircraft demand that right now do not have a replacement. Like we do not have anyone that's going to go that in into the market. And so that's a huge opportunity also for the manufacturing sector. The aircraft assembly, like for example, go. In the next five years, a lot of the people will be tired. So that means they have to get people to assemble the aircraft from all the global aircraft, from the global aircraft mechanics to be able to put them on and get them to settle. So they did that. The demand is ever increasing. So again, Clark, we're pushing Clark to be as the hub. Clark has one of the longest runways in Asia. Can land the station. So it also has the uh, area big enough for the people to come with more miles. So we have to, you know, we have to try to move in. And we're also quite lucky because we are in the, in the space where we can accommodate a lot of Thai schools, which, if you look at aircraft requirements, we also will need pilots to be able to support the aircraft assembly. So, uh, almost thirty percent are uh, single pile or narrow bodies. So that's like the precision. So, but as you know, by twenty twenty eight. At the current 31,000, it will be 42,000 planes aircraft to be serviced. It's a huge demand. It's almost 30% growth in the next 10 years. So every year, 4% growth is So that's why we. But 30% of that will be the single IR. So that's why we are pushing for that. So the white value is as much because people like to have more frequencies. So, cabinet year qualifications. After a few years, the planes can fly up to two decades. But the interiors is like that in an old couch. After a while, it gets separated. So, after, depending on the air, airline budget, it gets ripped apart. It gets ripped apart. So, uh, and then we're done. So, hopefully, we can get that side of the market. And it is, uh, so I think again, we already mentioned the challenges that there are in our space meetings and all that. So for, for the industry AIP, I mean, we have some of the technology and the skill sets that we will produce at some of the components. And of course, we really need to uh, join stakeholders and to want to do whatever we can. And hopefully, uh, we'll see them find some time to 
to uh, give their best uh, efforts at moving uh, space time towards in that direction. So where we are now, we are of course uh, looking at uh, space technology and applications and we being a lot of both sensing technologies, we would like to see this uh, sector or this application sector uh, move the way that uh, the aerospace aviation industry is in the world. I think uh, experience uh, being um, being uh, done by AIAP and uh, the members who gave us some insight as to what kind of uh, direction the future uh, space technology uh, might 